Is this you? Do you hate when people put in more effort than you and feel the need to tell them about it? If you hear a 3 tick 4 granite or see a long string of random words that people are calling a skilling method and it scares you, I understand. A lot of this game can be boiled down to click a tree and wait, and it's okay if you're used to that and want to keep it that way. But what if, and hear me out here, you could put in more effort for more reward? I know it's a crazy concept. Double resource drops, huge XP boosts, faster levels, zero time XP, it could all be yours. If you wanted it to be. And if you do, hey, that's what this video is for. I'll go over a few basic tips first, the usual mistakes that people tend to make when they're frustrated with their XP rates, then get into how to start learning some of the easier tick manipulation methods and how to transfer those into something even better as you practice. Your screen is way too big. Sure, it kind of looks nicer, your character's bigger, and we all know that means better, but I feel so bad for your wrists. You don't always have to play on a small client. If you like the extra real estate on your screen when you're doing PVM or whatever, that's fine. You can resize it, but almost any skilling method hugely benefits from making the client as close to the minimum size as you can stand. The inventory is closer to everything you're interacting with, mobs, the bank, resources in the world. It translates to miles of mouse movement you can save yourself from doing, which means your wrists and hands don't need to do nearly as much work. No matter how casual you play, you're still playing for hundreds of hours if you're watching this. Give your body a break, no matter how small it seems. And if you upscaled Runelight to 4K and full screen your game, I don't know what to tell you, but get some help. I bet some of you watching this have never even thought about your mouse settings before. Or maybe when you got your first gaming mouse that was set to 2000 DPI and you said, sure, why not? But if 20 years of being awful at first-person shooters has taught me anything, it's that lower mouse sensitivity means more accurate clicks. It might take you a second to get used to it, but 800 DPI is the maximum I use for any activity I do in Old School RuneScape. Sometimes I go down to 600. Trust me, give it like 15 minutes before you say it's terrible, you're going to be way more accurate, I promise. I know people on Reddit like to yell about how all maxed players are toxic and always telling them how to live their lives or whatever, but the most common thing I hear from higher level community, when they aren't joking around anyway, is that the most efficient method for you is the one you can keep doing. Maybe you watch this and decide to only use one of the things I said because the rest sound frustrating to you, but you won't know if you can even do a method until you try it, and you won't know if you enjoy it either. Until about a year ago, I didn't even know how to do the most basic tick manipulation stuff. I never tried 3 tick granite because I didn't think I could do it, and it sounded awful. But then I wanted to max my UIM faster, so I took the time to learn. Turns out high effort, high reward is a pretty cool gameplay mechanic. So sure, the most efficient thing for you might be AFK Motherload Mine for 18k XP per hour, but sometimes it's good to branch out and learn something new. Maybe you'll be like the thousands of other people who enjoy efficiency sometimes. There are probably so many things that you do that you say are incredibly boring, but you still just stand at the bank and do them for 50 hours, running out of stuff to watch on Netflix and complaining to your clan. But almost every bank standing skill can be done while doing so many other things. Do you do herb runs for GP? You can do fletching while you run around. Do you do birdhouse runs? You can fire make on the way or elk. Still got a bunch of quests left to finish the lumpy elite diary. Blow some glass or enchant some bolts while you run around. Some of the most chill methods that people love, like herbivore and artifacts, have so much downtime where all you do is run around, and they have teleports that make it easy to bank if you need to for whatever you want to zero time. It doesn't even add that much effort. You're still running all the way across Fossil Island, just now you click a couple extra times before you AFK for 20 seconds. So you want to learn how to manipulate the tick. But the only videos you can find are an hour long with some European techno, and they don't even tell you how to do it. That isn't because they're trying to hide the method from you, it's because they assume anyone watching that understands how ticks and tick manipulation work before they're trying to learn a method. Once you know that, it becomes as simple as slotting in the different manipulation methods into the activity you want to do. So I'll start assuming you know nothing about it, and we'll go from there. 
you should turn on a metronome. You won't need it forever unless you want it to stick around to help you turn your brain off, but you have to build a sense of how long ticks and cycles take to start using them. You probably have a lot of that already just from playing the game, but it makes a big difference when you start actually paying attention to them. You can use either the visual metronome plugin, which can put a counter on the screen for you, or a flashing tile around your player to indicate ticks, or the plain uh, metronome plugin from Brunelight. But I hate that one. You do you. The most simple way to start, in my opinion, is by clicking a knife and a teak or mahogany log. Or herb and tar, that's your choice. I'll only judge you a little bit. Clicking the knife on the log when you only have one of that type of log in your inventory resets your skilling cycle and starts a three tick timer. Once that timer is up, the action you are attempting will complete. If you don't click anything else, that action is fletching a stock, but if you click a rock or a tree or a fishing spot, you get the resource instead, or at least a chance at getting it. It's pretty OP. So go to any tree you can cut, preferably with a decent cut chance for your level, and all you have to do is click the knife, the log, and then the tree and the same tick every three ticks. That sounds like a lot when you say it out loud, but three ticks is almost two seconds, I think you can do it. You click the knife, pay attention to the metronome, and at the start of a tick, when the metronome beeps or the number changes, click a log in the tree. Then on the next tick, you click your knife, chill out for a tick, and then repeat. Log tree, knife, wait. Log tree, knife, wait. You don't have to worry about dropping when you're starting out, just let your inventory fill up, then drop it or bank it, whatever you want to do. If you have a decent woodcutting level and you aren't getting any logs for a while, you're probably out of cycle. The easiest way to restart it is to just wait for a couple ticks, then start again. Just make sure you don't knife the log or herb the tar before you wait, or you'll get the dreaded Fletching or Herbal XP drop. This three tick cycle works on a bunch of stuff. Trees, rocks, most fishing spots, hunter traps, fire making, it's basically the building block of most tick manipulation. Once you're feeling the rhythm and able to start the cycle and hold on to it for a while, try throwing in some drops. Shift right click the item to change the left click to drop if it's not already, then after clicking the tree, you can click the item to drop it. If you're feeling brave, you can drop multiple items in the same tick too. You got that down? Feeling comfortable with it maybe? Nice, I'm proud of you. Now we can move on to... For this method, we head to the Barbarian Pond with two knives and a log. If you don't have the dropping cycle down after the tree clicking, this one will help you figure it out a lot quicker. To start, it's the same as the trees. Click the knife, the log, and the fishing spot every three ticks to get the fish faster. However, instead of dropping the fish every cycle, you cut the fish you catch before clicking the fishing spot. If you're successful, you'll get some cooking XP and some fish eggs in your inventory, which you can use to keep the cycle going without clicking the knife on the log. Knife log, knife fish spot, eat knife fish spot. The trick is though, you have to already be fishing for the eating cycle to apply to your skilling cycle. If you start by clicking the eggs and then the spot, you're gonna wait a long time to get that fish. However, since you aren't always gonna have eggs to eat, you still have the knife log on you to start the cycle if you fall out of it and need to eat to clear space. I find it easier to do if you have stuff filling the top portion of your inventory to make fish appear by your knife log location, and you shouldn't need more than 10 inventory spots to stay in cycle indefinitely if you can keep up, so don't be afraid to put some random trash in there to confuse people in screenshots. I'll be showing you how to do this on shooting stars, but this same method also works for mining rocks, any tree that you grow in a farming patch, whatever you want to practice on that's fine by me. It's basically the same method as the first one. Except by now, you're hopefully a lot more comfortable with how much free time you have between cycles, so we can add in a little movement. Log move, star, knife, log move, star, knife. In the most basic terms possible, by walking, you trick the game into thinking you have to complete multiple skilling cycles on the same tick. This means it rolls the success chance twice at the end of your three tick cycle, and for almost any place this is possible, you have a chance to get double the resources and XP per action. It's still a three tick cycle, like the other one, but since you can double the amount of rolls you get per skilling attempt, you're basically doing two actions every three ticks, so 1.5 tick, get it?
Dropping is a little more annoying with this method because you're adding extra clicks into a smaller time frame. But if you've tried the other methods I've talked about so far, I think you'll be starting to understand. Log move drop, resource knife, log move drop, resource knife, etc. The easiest way to learn, in my opinion, is shooting stars because they last so insanely long that it doesn't matter if you suck for 20 minutes straight. It'll still be there for you, and the stardust is stackable so you have time to breathe before you start trying to drop stuff. Like the fish egg eating, there are some places where the skilling cycle has to be already started for this method to work. So far the only one I know of is the Sulphur and Lova King, where you have to click the rock and start the mining cycle before starting the 1.5 tick cycle to get the double Sulphur drops. I'm sure there's more, but I don't know them, sorry. Go find them and let me know. Sometimes you're in the mood for something a little more chill, but still faster than AFKing, which is where two tick skilling fits in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan, because if I'm paying attention, I'd rather be getting the most I can out of it, but it has its place if you like it. The easiest way for me to show you is to use the harpoon spot in Piscorilius, but that's just because of visibility, basically. You can do it with the rabbits by the teaks in Prif, the birds by the teaks on Ape Atoll, the rats by the Falador farm. You can even do it with other players on a PvP world if you want to. All you need is a spell that won't do damage, and a short bow or hunter's crossbow with no ammo. The basic gist is, you want to be fishing one tick and auto-retaliating the next, so you need two mobs with a four tick attack cycle to attack you two ticks apart. When they hit you, you auto-retaliate and start a combat cycle, but you have no ammo. Then the next tick, you click the spot and get a fish from the end of the combat cycle. I think it's kind of voodoo to me at this point, I just know it works. Now the hardest part of this is actually setting up the things attacking you. The method itself is super easy after that, but the rat lur luring is pretty annoying to learn. The easiest way I've found is to attack them. Take them where you need them. Line them up either north or south of you on different tiles. Then, when you see a damage splat from the rat you're closest to, run next to, either east or west, of the rat furthest away from you. If you do it right, they should get in cycle real easy for you. You probably get frustrated by the rats a few times, don't worry, it's normal. The next thing you gotta learn is how to move. If you're doing it on trees, find one of those hour-long videos with Eurotechno in the background and see which tiles they click on to run around, they know a lot more than I do. Basically, if you don't move just right, you'll get the things attacking you out of sync. Some people choose to just not move when they're doing teaks and just stand on the tile with two trees, ignoring the other, which if you're looking for a more chill method, there you go. It sounds nice. If you're fishing, though, you don't really get that option. The spot moves when it wants to move, and if you don't follow it, you don't get fish. It's a lot easier here than at teaks, in my opinion, though, because I don't do this at teaks. But you don't have obstacles to run around, and you can control exactly how the rats follow you. Quick rundown, if you don't already know, almost every mob in the game, as well as the player's pathing algorithms, prioritize east and west movement over north and south. That means that as long as you don't step onto the same tile as the mob is on, and you only walk east or west, they'll stay in the exact same configuration. If you set up the rats how I mentioned at the beginning, you should have run one rat south of you and one rat either east or west. If the fishing spot moves east of you, and the rat is to your west, you can just walk over to the spot, wait for the rat to hit you, and keep going. However, if there's a rat blocking the path to wherever the spot went, you have to step one tile diagonally, either southwest or southeast, whichever way you need to go. Walk to one tile in the same direction from where you need to go for where the spot is. Path through the rats when they get to you, and then keep going. It's kind of hard to put into words, but it's in the video. You can watch it, I believe in you. As long as they're in the cycle before, and as long as you don't run when moving spots, they'll keep you going. And that's all I'm going to teach you this time. If you're a smart cookie, once you get these methods down, you can apply them to all sorts of things. Maybe you'll even make a new method one day, who knows? My main hope for this is that it might help someone realize that being sweaty isn't necessarily a bad thing. Once you break a method down, it's much easier than it looks, and sometimes you're in the mood for a little more active gameplay that might help your skilling goals. 
If you found anything helpful, nice. Maybe you leave a comment saying how cool and good at the game I am? I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and let me know if there's anything you've seen in my moral percent speedrun or whatever other thing you saw that you'd like a more in-depth explanation of in the future, and maybe I can help you out. <laughs>